Okay, First Chronicles 29, we left off in verse 10. Coming to the close of David, sending forth Solomon. The land has been purchased for, for the temple. And verse 10, wherefore David blessed, made happy, the Lord. Now, isn't that amazing? David blessed the Lord. You imagine making God Almighty happy. That's one of my prayers when we go out to a public ministry or somewhere. Lord God, can we make you happy? Can we make you pleased? Because the nonsense that's going on today doesn't please the Lord. Before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Look at it. Father God. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. God is great. And the power, all power belongs to God. God's power is he can say something and it can be. God's power is he can heal you. God's power is he can make you, have you to understand the scriptures. God's power is to use you that someone will come to the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior. Power that God can give you to grow another Christian, to grow yourself. And these video games, you know, you touch the diamond, you touch the cherry, whatever. You know, that gives you, no, that ain't no power. That ain't the power that comes to your house that, for electricity. And the glory. And the victory. Victory. That's, it's finished. It's done. To our well-being. And the majesty. And that's the first time majesty shows up. And when you think of majesty, you think of royalty, you think of the elite class of people. What more elite class can you get of God who's great, powerful, and glory, and victor? There is not one nation that has ever been on this planet, as far as Adam, that has never had a battle that they were 100% victorious. Alexander the Great lost battle. Joshua lost a battle. Ai. To God, all battles will be won. Satan may get some some little ground. He may get some enforcement, but in the end, he'll be cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. And Majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Now Satan has power. Satan has the authority. But everything belongs to God. So, God has allowed man to sell another man a title deed to property where it belongs to God. And if you deceive somebody on property, a house, land, or anything like that, you're going to give an account to God. It's his. And he's going to fold it up. He's going to burn it up with a fervent heat with elements burning. He's going to make the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. That's what he thinks about this earth right now. Thine is the kingdom. And Jesus spoke about that kingdom. Thy kingdom come, O Lord. And this is what David is speaking about Jerusalem right now. This whole thing that I have right now, God, is yours. The majesty that we have, and the temple is not even built. The tabernacle, David said, is a bunch of cloth hanging out over there where I can see from my palace. That's not good enough for you, God. So we're not looking at Jerusalem as a piece of land. We're looking, David's looking at God, the majesty that fills the heaven. Thou art exalted as head above all. Not in the earth today. There are people around David right now, they don't exalt God. They're, right now where David is, there are people to the west that lift up Dagon. There are people to the east, the, the children of Ammon and the children of of Moab, they worship other gods to the north and south. But God is exalted in heaven. There are probably people right there with David right now in the congregation. They don't believe in God. They're just there for the thrill. Both riches, everything of gold, silver, everything of value today of man of the stock markets or whatever it be whatever the most important thing that a man can value comes from god 
The gold comes from the earth that God made. Let there be earth, let there be ground, let there be land. Silver, diamonds, pearls, they all came from God. And honor come of thee. We're to honor God. God shows us through his word how to honor him and how not to honor him. Bible says, honor thy mother and father. What you're the respect to your parents is also the same respect you give to God. And that as parents, you are to be in representation of God. You're to be loving. You're to be corrective. You're to be guiding. You're to be caring. Everything that God is. And thou reignest king over all. And in thy hand is power and might. Now that hand, the right hand of God, Acts chapter 1, will be the Lord Jesus Christ seated right there. But look at, look at God's hand. And think about what God's mouth. Genesis 1, let there be light. And it was light. Let there be, let there be, let there be, and it was there. And God said, be fruitful. And they were fruitful. Now, that's the power of God's mouth. Can you imagine the power of his hands? The very hands that they will put nail prints in, that those nail prints will be in the hands of God for all eternity. But if you don't believe that Jesus is God and God is Jesus, you've got a problem. <clears throat> those mighty hands, Jesus told them, said, listen, I can call legions of angels. I can clap my hands and say, come on, let's go, let's go. And yet he put those hands on the on the cross. He put those hands out for the nails. That blood that he spilt was for our sins. The power of God and might. And in thy hand it is it is to make great and to give strength unto all. So it's the hand of God that strengthens us. And Jesus said, "My Father shall never pluck him out of his hand." That's strength. Where the devil says, give me that person. Uh-uh, it's mine. It's mine. You can go in a battlefield today and you can grab someone's weapon. There have been men describing David's mighty men. He went to this Egyptian, grabbed his own spear, and killed them with his own spear. And yet the hand of God, when he's got a Christian who's been adopted, who's trusted Jesus, you ain't taking him. That's mine. Signed, sealed, and delivered upon the nail prints. That will be there for all eternity. To make great. By the hands of Jesus Christ. Now let me not exalt ourselves as men. But we are great. We rise above the world through Jesus Christ. Though they don't want it to be. Though they don't acknowledge. But in the eyes of God we're great. Because we have believed on Jesus. His son. We are his family. We are his children. And strength. Call upon God in strength. Don't rely on man. When you're weak, call upon the Lord. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Look at David, giving thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord. In everything, give thanks. But who am I? Here's the humbleness of David. And what is my people, the Jewish people? Well, they were chosen. They were a particular people. They were the ones that God made a covenant with. They're the ones that God spoke from from the uh, Mount Sinai and it was fire, earthquakes. That we should be able to offer so willingly after the sword. And everything has been offered, people have been giving because they want to. And God loves the person that gives because they want to give from the heart, not because they have to. And all the materials that David is praying for and about the temple and praying before Solomon to build this temple, the items that have been given to that treasury has been given to Solomon to build, and David did not have a thermometer, David did not have a building program, David did not converse the people, give, 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 give. You didn't see that. He said, we're going to build a temple to the ma majesty of God, and people came and gave. For all things come of thee, 
That gold that we gave you, God, that's your gold. The silver, that's your silver. The iron, that's your iron. The wood, you made the trees. Everything is God's. He with the most toys in the end wins. No, you don't. Because you get a pine wood box or a concrete slab, whatever they do, wherever you got. And that came from God. Concrete came from God. Your spirit will go back to the God that created you, and your soul will go where you have decided to go, depending on what God has told you or told you not to do. And of thine own have we given thee. See, it's yours. That gold, silver, everything. Whatever we have stockpiled, God, it's yours. You allowed us to have it. For we are strangers before thee. Now, usually that, that, that implication of stranger through Moses is the Gentiles. And what David could be doing is, you know what? We're just a bunch of dead dogs. Because he says, who are we as a people? He's not magnifying the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in his own kingdom. He's like, we're just a bunch of dead dogs. And remember, David has a kingdom not only of Jewish people, but he has a kingdom of Gentiles too. Hiram's going to help David and has helped him. Hiram's going to help and will help Solomon with materials and cedar wood and craftsmen. And there will be people of the Gentiles that will come and build for God. And David's taking off the, 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 the pride of the Jewish that we're just nobody. When they were in time of Jesus, they, you know, we be of Moses' seed. We be of Abraham's seed. And John the Baptist said, hey, don't come to me with that. Because God's able to take these stones right here and raise up a whole group of people. Jesus said, hey, you say if you're Abraham, if you were of Abraham, you would not seek to kill me. Pride of race, pride of grace, pride of who we are. That's not David. David has no pride. And sojourners. David was saying, this world's not my home. I'm just a passing through. He's on his way to Abraham's bosom. And even after, the, after there were people that rose from the dead, after Jesus rose from the dead, the, the apostle Peter says that David's sceptre, and David's still there in the sceptre. According to the Acts, David has not risen yet. As we all our fathers, that's David's great, 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 great grandfather, our days on the earth are as a shadow. And that's, that's what James says. What is a man's life? Man's been here approximately 4,000, 5,000 years. Well, what is that to 90 years? What's that to 100 years? It's nothing. And there is none abiding. And what he means by that statement, David can't see Adam. David can't see Seth. David has not met Abraham. David has not seen Noah. They've died. Oh, Lord, our God. Oh, Lord, our God. All this store. Hey, look at that. All this store. So where do you get the idea of store? When you go in there, they got all kinds of stuff for you. It comes out of the King James Bible. Now, this is not a store of canned goods and produce section and all this store. Gold, silver, precious stones, nails, iron, whatever you need. It, it's, a, it's a hardware store. The store here that Dave is talking about. That we have prepared to build thee. For God, a house for thy holy name cometh of thy hand and is all thy own. Now look what David says about that temple. Lord, we're going to build you a house. But guess what? Your This house is going to be to your holy name. And it's going to be your hand that's going to have us able to build it. And when we're done building it, it's going to be your house. And David's going to die. He's not going to see this temple ever built. This temple's going to be destroyed because of sin. Well, it's all God. I went out. I had a public ministry. I had a church ministry. I had this kind of ministry. And it's all what I've done. That's not David. 
I was able to help people and grow people and show people that's because of God was lending hand. God was doing it. God was giving me the power. God was making all the behalf. It wasn't me. It's not me. Oh, when I look at the public ministry, I'm involved in the sins that I am involved by the public ministry. God is not a sinner. God is pure and holy and righteous. Today, people think, oh, look what we've done. No, it's look how great thou art. Not how great I am. How great thou art, God. I know also. Look at that assurance. I know also. My God. See, that's my God. David said, that thou triest the hearts, and that's a bad word, as God did, tape, did tempt uh, Abraham with Isaac, and says over there, James, God's not willing to tempt, all these things, that's, that's bad. No, God tempts us. God wants to see where we stand. God puts situations in our life to say, this is how great you are. You failed. You failed miserably. So you're not on that pedestal. You haven't reached that growth thing. I put that thing in your life and look at you. You bent under pressure. You still need work in this area. And there are things that God puts in our life. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We got the victory. Thank you, Lord. It was you that gave me the strength. Lord God, it was you that gave me the power to return. Lord God, it's you that gets the glory. Thank you, Lord. I had nothing to do with it. When it crumbled and trumbled and, and came of dust and ruins, that's me, God. It has pleasure in uprightness. Oh, what would be the opposite of uprightness? Downrightness, which God would not have pleasure. When you do something that's not right, though you think it's right, God has no pleasure. As for me and the uprightness of my heart, and that's not pride, because David's a sinner. I have willingly offered all these things. Everything David, David gave, he wanted to give. Now I have seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. They're all offering. They're all giving. They've given something. That widow that walked in the treasury where Jesus was, she cast her two mice, everything she had, and Jesus said she gave it with joy. Everybody else just cast in what they had extra after the end of the end of the Sabbath week and all that. They just gave what they had and complained about it. I bet you in amongst those treasures for the temple, I bet you there were treasure things. Such as an alabaster box that was broken to anoint the hair, anoint the feet of Jesus, who's going to die and going to be buried and rose again. Mary. And what, what did the disciples do? They 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 harassed Mary for doing that. The Bible says that that smelt the whole room well. And God was pleased. Mary did not ask, oh, I wish I had not done that. The disciples said that. Why did you put this to a great waste? Imagine something expensive, something that was dear, something that may have been handed down, I'm not sure, that was broken for Jesus. And the disciples said that was a waste. That's not given to the Lord. O oh Lord God of Abraham, that's important. O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, that's truly important. O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, that's truly important, not Ishmael. Ishmael's not in the group, it's not an Arabian God. Arabian God will get you to hell. The God of the gasoline and the oil and, and the dinosaurs, whatever that oil comes from, the Middle East that America loved, that's not the God of the Bible. That little piece of land that, oh, Hamas has launched missiles and all that. No, we don't say nothing. Israel launches one missile as a reason. Oh, Israel has killed a bunch of houses and killed a bunch of hospitals and all their children have died. Oh, mean Israel. Shut up. That's God's people. You're lying. Probably fake news. You got to have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. But Paul says God's not finished with the Jew. Pray for Jerusalem. Pay for the priests of Jerusalem. Go out there, find somebody who's supporting the gospel to the Jewish people and support them and help them. Our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the hearts of thy people. Listen, to the Jewish person, you know what their thoughts are? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We're the Jewish people. We're the great people. We're the people of God. You're a bunch of dead dogs. 
but don't get too prideful. Because there are Jewish people today on this side of Calvary, on this side of the empty tomb of the timeline, that they are in hell, they are burning in hell, and they're Jewish people. That rich man that Jesus told us about Luke chapter 16, he says, Father Abraham, he had to be of the Jewish descent to save Father Abraham. Being a Jew is not going to save your soul now. Having the Jewish Messiah of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, of the virgin. That's what you need. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart. And that don't mean 100%. Perfect in this aspect would be give it all. Give it what you got. Go for it. It ain't going to be 100%. But you know what? You gave it perfectly what you can do. You're going to sin. You're going to fail somewhere. You're a sinner. All have sinned. But when God can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But Lord, I didn't do it. To the fullest of capable. You did a lot better than other, what other people don't do. There are people out there who don't do nothing at all. You went out there with the heart you wanted to do. And you flopped. You failed. You, but you kept on going. You kept on doing Solomon's going to fail. He's going to fail miserably. To keep thy commandments, we don't do that. Thy testimonies, we don't do that. And thy statutes, we don't do that. To do all these things, we don't do that. Not as words, please, any man boast. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We don't do nothing for salvation. It's already been accomplished. It's already been on the merit of Jesus Christ alone. Now, we work for our faith. To show others that we have that faith in God. To prove to others that there is faith, but that work of faith is not salvation. It's an evidence. It's a token. I love God because he first loved me. And if I love God enough, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to try to have a good, clean life. Because I do not want to be someone else's excuse. Oh, I can't do that. You see the Christian family over there? You see that, you see that guy over there? He does... You know, I, can't, I don't want to be like that. I do not want people to excuse before God because how I live. I want to live, try to live right. And to build this palace for the which I have made provision. Well, David's got all the stockpile. And Solomon's going to need more. And he will get more building material. This is a massive place he's going to build. And David said to all the congregation. Now bless, make happy the Lord, your God. He's your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God their Father, and bowed down their heads, and worshipped the Lord and the King. Oh, <gasps> well, we're American. We don't have a king. We got a president. You're going to worship the Lord and the president. I don't like him. Tough. Does not God put on the throne who he wants? Does not God put into the into the mind of the king? Does not the, the Bible says Proverbs? God directs the, the thoughts and the hearts of the king. Does he not do that? I don't like him. He's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He, 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 I don't. And then you go ahead and keep sinning. It says right there, the Lord and the king. And you'll say, well, that's Old Testament. Paul and Peter spoke about giving to the authority of the government. Obey the powers that be. Then say obey the powers that be in the political party that you love. You know, if they're so wicked and so bad, why don't you get the effort that you do hating them? Why don't you get the effort praying for them? Listen, I pray for Obama and his family. I still pray for them. I still pray for Billy Carter and his family. I still have the names of presidents that are still living. The Clintons, they hate the Clintons. I pray for their souls. Listen, if Bill, Clint, Bill and Hillary Clinton were to get saved today, do you realize all the things you hate them for will be under the blood? And God would say, I don't know which sins you're talking about. And that would make some Christians angry. If God would forgive the hateful sins that they hate, that presidential family, whoever they are, that God would forgive them. They would hate it, God, for that. Yeah, ugh. Worship the Lord and the king. And they sacrificed sacrifices on the Lord. And offered burnt offerings on the Lord. On the morrow, the next day, after that day, even a thousand bullocks. 
That's a lot of meat. That's a lot of animal. Do you imagine what the noise of that was? Do you imagine what the smell of that place was? A thousand bullocks are coming up and they're being slaughtered. They're mooing. They're they're in agony. The blood has got to be drained. The priests are working. There, there's great activity going around. We're not only talking about bullets. A thousand rams, two thousand animals so far. It's busy. And a thousand lambs, three thousand animals are brought before the tabernacle, are brought before the Levites, brought before the priests. I bet you some of the Levites have got to help the priests because there is a lot of slaughtering going around before God. And their drink offerings, that's the wine. Got to have a lot of wine. There's got to be a lot of wine. You will find this in Leviticus. You'll find this in Numbers. You will find this in Deuteronomy. This offering had to have this this thing, had to have this amount of wine, you had to have this offering, you had to wave this, you had to. With their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. So in abundance means it's more than what the law prescribed. <laughs> David says, listen, what the law prescribed is not good enough. Bring more. And did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness. So there's a fellowship. There's a fellowship. They made Solomon the son of David king the second time. Let's hold your place there, but let's look at chapter 23, verse 1. You know, Jesus was anointed to be king through the birth of the adopted father of Joseph. Of the line of, of David, Matthew 1. So, 1 Chronicles 23, 1. So, when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. So, David is living and Solomon's made king. David's going to die and he's made Solomon. There's another assembly. There's another meeting for, for Solomon to be the king. The first time, David's son, Abinadab, said, Hey, it's my kingdom. I'm the firstborn. It's me, Joab, get all these people together. Let's have a good old hula. And one of David's prophets came to Bathsheba and said, that's not what God wanted, did he? And the fact is, if this keeps on going, you and your son Solomon are going to be a confederacy against the government, and you're going to be killed. So David had to counteract that, that little usurp of the authority of the throne to make Solomon Hurry up, make him king to declare he's the king by God. And David's doing another royal profession here to say, all right, this is it. He's the king. Got a problem? We've done it twice. Jesus Christ will come back king as king. The first time above his head, upon that cross, king of the Jews. He's not king. When he comes back the second time, king of kings, lord of lords, he comes back as king. The second time. And anointed him, in the, anointed him unto the Lord to be the chief governor and Zadok to be the priest. Now, Zadok, he's the high priest. There he is. And Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David, his father, and prospered in all Israel, obeyed him. Now, see the overlap of, the, of, of the reign? David reigned 40 years, then Solomon reigned 40 years. But when Solomon's reign began, he David was still reigning. You can't come to the 40th year of David's reign and say, okay, now Solomon took over 40 years. There's an overlap. But people go out trying to date things and try to... You've got to think. And the Bible doesn't tell us at what point did Solomon become king. And remember, we just read it twice. He became king while David's still living. David's still living, and David says, there's the throne, Solomon. Take it. Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord. Look what David did. David gave the throne of Israel to God. And when Solomon is ordained, he's anointed, he, the Bible, the Holy Spirit tells us that that throne that David, and it speaks about the throne of David, when, when Gabriel comes to Mary, he says, the son Jesus, you should call his name Jesus, he shall take over the throne of David, which is true. 
But look at the little note that the, that the Holy Spirit put in First Chronicles 29. David called that throne the throne of the Lord. That's prophecy. That is Jesus Christ the Messiah will sit on that throne. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And people say Jesus is not God. Who's going to sit on that throne for all eternity? Jesus. What's that throne called? It's called the throne of David. It's also called the throne of the Lord. It belongs to Jesus. There it is. How can you not say that Jesus is not God? As king instead of David his father and prospered and all Israel obeyed him. That's a type of Jesus Christ in the reign of millennium. All are going to obey him. If you don't, the short story is you're going to go jump into that lake of fire that's in the millennium. When they bring you to, to Christ and you be in judgment of danger for calling a man a Rekha, a fool. And you're brought before the apostles, you're brought before the, the bride of Jesus Christ who's got reign over cities. And we bring you to the judgment seat of God, Jesus Christ, the throne, as Solomon had people come before his throne. And there is the lake of fire that God will cook. There it is. You obey God or... And then you got another problem. Once the millennium's over, Satan builds up this massive force of an army to go against Jesus Christ. They obey Jesus Christ in millennium, but they're doing it because they have to, not because they want to. And that's not a giving heart. And they're cast off in the lake of fire with the devil. And all the princes, and all the mighty men, military, all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon, the king. And he's already king. We already read the first line of 23.1. He's king. They're both kings. And the Lord magnified Solomon, the king, made him larger, made him bigger, in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him all such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in all Israel. We're going to read Solomon. It says the silver was like rocks in Israel. Imagine a kid going out and picking up rocks. Oh, what's that? You got a piece of silver rock there. Pfft, that's nothing. <laughs> Throw it away. Big deal. They said the kings and queens from all over the known world were coming to Solomon. The queen of Sheba, she brings, or, or is it easier? That queen that comes and brings all kinds of spices. The guy goes out and gets peacocks and apes. I don't know why. This David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. The time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron. And that was while uh, Saul's son, Ishbanish, reigned under Abner, I believe it was. And then Ishbanish was killed. Abner joins, I believe it was Abner. He joins in with David, and Joab gets all angry and kills Abner. <laughs> we, we did that. And he reigned in Hebron. And 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem as unity. He, all nations under David. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of David the king first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel, the seer, first, second Samuel. First, second Samuel is one book. First, second Kings is one book. First, second Chronicles is one book in the, in the Jewish Bible. And the book of Nathan, the prophet. What's the book of Nathan? I don't know. Don't go looking for it. It might be in Samuel. It might be in Kings. It might be in Chronicles. I don't know. And the book of Gad, the seer. Where are they? I don't know. If they're here in the Bible, the Holy Spirit says, I'm not going to tell you what it is. If it's not here, the Holy Spirit says, I don't want you to have it. But they're there. Which all his reign and his might and the times that went over him and over Israel and over all the kingdom of the country. And we close with 1 Chronicles 29.